On the day of the car accident, my wife was celebrating her first love's birthday. I died on the street waiting for rescue, holding my sick child. When I opened my eyes again, I had returned to my high school days. A pure and lovely girl in the backseat blushed and asked me if I wanted to be her boyfriend. No. Such disgusting things. Don't ever let me hear it again. The students at second high school were all talking about it. Alex, Alicia's simp, had fallen for someone else. During morning reading, he didn't bring milk for Alicia, nor did he do her chores during the break. Even when Alicia had a stomachache, he didn't skip class to buy her warm baby and make rose sugar water as usual. He's been chasing her for almost a year. And he's just giving up like that. Maybe he's throwing a tantrum, waiting for Alicia to coax him. I think he's moved on. I heard the school beauty from third high is also chasing him. With a bang, Alicia angrily slammed her English book on the desk. It's morning reading time now. If you want to gossip, do it outside. As soon as she finished speaking, I happened to walk to the door. The class fell silent. Dozens of eyes stared at me. Ignoring them, I walked to my seat, pulled out the chair, and sat down. When I opened my backpack, there were two glass bottles of milk inside. I guess the maid at home habitually heated two glasses of milk and forgot that I only needed to bring one from now on. Alicia's deskmate, Lisa, poked her arm and whispered, Alex is trying to make up with you. I told you he couldn't hold out for long. Alicia's eyes flickered, but in her sight, I gave the milk to my deskmate. Here, for you. Martin looked shocked and uncertain. For me? I nodded. Then I opened my Chinese textbook and started reading silently. Martin leaned over. Curious. Gee, why did you start studying? Without looking up. I said, I want to get into class a next semester. I got into second high with the second highest score in the city, but to be in the same class as Alicia. I deliberately left many questions unanswered during the first monthly exam and moved from class to class F as I wished. But now, I had no reason to stay in this class anymore. Thinking about how the girl behind me had once become my wife nine years later, but had put sleeping pills in our hungry child's bottle to rush to her first love, causing us to have a car accident on a snowy night on the way to the hospital. I can't forgive her. So, let's end this ill-fated relationship early. At noon, Martin and I went to the cafeteria. After the chef served me the ribs I wanted, he smiled and asked, What are you getting for Alicia today? We have her favorite squirrel fish. I paused, thinking back to my enthusiastic and bold pursuit of Alicia in high school. Filling her desk with love letters I wrote, confessing loudly to her on the flag-raising stage despite the principal's warning. Even the cafeteria chef knew her favorite dishes. Everyone knew I liked Alicia. It was almost as if I bashed my head against a wall and never looked back. Now thinking about it, it was all a joke. I shook my head. I'm not getting her food anymore. Paused. And added. I won't be getting it for her in the future either. The chef's hand which was about to serve the squirrel fish. Paused. I pulled Martin and turned to leave. Unexpectedly, I met Alicia at the end of the line. Our eyes met. And she looked stunned. I quickly looked away and left without turning back. Martin whispered. Alex, what's wrong with you? Why did you suddenly stop paying attention to Alicia? I sat at the table, mixing the rib soup with white rice. Nothing. I just think it was pretty pointless before. After I stopped centering my life around Alicia, I realized how much free time I actually had. Playing basketball with my buddies. Arm wrestling. Taking out the old test papers and practice books I had thrown into my desk and finishing them bit by bit. A high school life without constant worrying turned out to be so youthful and wonderful. Several days passed like this. And our school's dance competition arrived. The homeroom teacher told us to go to the playground to cheer for our classmates. I remembered in my past life, I had bought all the flowers from the flower shops near the school to cheer for the dance club Alicia was in. I even arranged the petals on the ground to spell out dancers with no boundaries. Chase your dreams. Even though the thorns on the flower branches pierced my palms, leaving them bleeding, I still felt it was worth it. In the end, Alicia's dance team won the competition with a high score. Amidst all the applause and congratulations, her eyes held her teammates and the honor, but not me. 
So this time, I used the excuse of feeling and well to ask the teacher for leave and stayed in the classroom alone to memorize English words. Such foolish and ridiculous things. I don't think I will ever do them again in this life. Martin came back halfway through and said to me, Today Alicia was completely off her game while dancing. Her eyes kept looking at the audience as if searching for someone. After saying that, he looked at me again. Brother G, could she be looking for you? No. I finished writing a line of English words and calmly denied it. At this time, Alicia practically had the words dislike Alex written all over her face. Me not going would make her happy. Martin continued to ramble on about the dance competition. I wasn't in the mood to listen, but didn't want to interrupt him, so I used the excuse of going to fetch hot water. Who knew? As soon as I stepped out of the classroom, I saw a few people walking quickly towards me. I was just about to step aside when Lisa, supporting Alicia, shouted at me. Alex, don't you have a pain relief spray? Hurry up and get it for Alicia. She's hurt. I did prepare a small medicine box because Alicia liked to dance. It contained many imported medicines that couldn't be bought on the market. Very effective for injuries. But, in my previous life, she won the competition. So why is she hurt this time? Alex, why are you just standing there? Lisa said anxiously. I came to my senses, glanced at Alicia's swollen ankle, and said, indifferently, it's expired. I threw it away. After saying this, I took my water cup to the water room, not even sparing a glance. What am I thinking? Her injury. What does it have to do with me? The pain I suffered in my previous life was far greater than hers. What reason do I have to feel sorry for her? Behind me, Lisa gasped, and I felt a piercing gaze on my back, as if trying to bore a hole through me, due to her foot injury. Alicia took a leave of absence and hadn't attended school for two days. When my mother heard about this, she had the maid make some bone broth and insisted I deliver it to Alicia to help her recover. Because our families were close friends and Alicia had grown up under my mother's watchful eye, she wouldn't be at ease unless I personally visited and expressed my concern. Despite my repeated protests, I couldn't resist my mother's persistent demands. She even instructed the driver to ensure I was delivered right to Alicia's doorstep to prevent me from escaping halfway. Reluctantly, I took the chicken soup to Alicia's house. It was late afternoon, and the leaves of the sycamore trees rustled in the wind. I wrapped my thin jacket tighter as I got out of the car and saw a white three-story house. The last rays of the setting sun cast an irritating orange hue over it. It was all too familiar. As a child, I often visited her home. And we even lived together there for nearly two years. Every corner of this place was filled with our memories. Her. Despondent over a breakup. And me. Comforting her despite my own heartbreak. Her. Promising to be good to me for life. And me. Naively believing her. My heart felt like it was being torn apart. The pain made me tremble all over. After a while. I calmed down. Opened the thermos and the delicious aroma of bone broth wafted out. I put it on the ground and fed it to a stray dog. Such good stuff. She didn't deserve it. After the dog finished the broth, I prepared to leave. Just as I turned around, someone called my name. The voice was childish yet familiar, and I didn't even bother to turn around. Alicia quickly approached me, hobbling on her crutches and nearly falling in front of me. Sweat dotted her fair forehead and she spoke with a hint of grievance. Alex, what the hell is wrong with you? I swallowed the lump in my throat. The girl in front of me, pure and beautiful, was once my favorite. I curled my lips into a cold, indifferent smile. I don't understand what you're saying. Then I continued walking forward. She quickly blocked my way again, her chest heaving and her lips pale. It was clear that those few steps were painful and difficult for her. Why are you ignoring me? Alicia's eyes filled with confusion, as if she wanted to read something from my face. But she couldn't understand. She pointed to the food container on the ground. That bone broth was from me. Why did you feed it to a dog? You used to insist on coming to my house even when I didn't let you. Today, you didn't come up. I've been injured for days. And you haven't shown any concern. What exactly dot dot dot? Isn't this better? I interrupted her coldly. You find me annoying anyway. 
Alicia was momentarily stunned, then nodded after a while. Yes, I don't like you clinging to me. I feel happy when you're far away from me. After saying this, she stared at me and pulled out a mocking smile. Alex, you'd better not be playing some trick to get my attention. You know I hate that. A trick? It's not surprising Alicia would think that. In my past life, I indeed did many childish and ridiculous things to get her attention. Although I eventually made her my wife, I never won her heart and ended up dying miserably on the street. So in this life, I won't waste any more time or feelings on her. You overestimate yourself. I don't have time to play games with you. I pulled my lips into a cold, emotionless smile. The bone broth was something my mother insisted the driver and I bring. You know how my mother is. Just pretend you drank it and don't give me any trouble. Alicia's eyes were filled with disbelief. You think of me as a dog. I shrug. If that's what you think. I can't help it. After saying this, I didn't give her a chance to argue and walked away. Seeing her in class every day was hard enough. Now I just wanted to disappear. I had only taken a few steps when the thermos flew through the air, crashing to the ground with a loud bang. Then Alicia's furious voice rang out. I don't need your stupid soup. Since the incident with the soup, Alicia and I hadn't spoken. I stopped involving myself in anything related to her. No longer clinging to her to gain favor. Instead, I focused entirely on my studies, aiming to return to class as soon as possible. Once I'm back in class, uh, I won't have to see her every day. In two years, during the college entrance exams, I won't stay in the same city as her. Watching her break up and get back together with her first love, experiencing constant emotional turmoil, I will escape as far as possible, hoping never to cross paths with her again in this lifetime. However, the high school curriculum was quite challenging for me now, so I asked my mom to find a tutor for me. Among many candidates, I chose Sophia, who was in the same grade and school, but from class A. She was the top student who had beaten me in the high school entrance exam and was known as a super scholar. Our first conversation was very brief. I said, I want to improve my grades as quickly as possible and return to class A. She said, leave it to me. I started getting closer to Sophia. Whenever I encountered difficult problems, I would save them up and go to class A to ask her during breaks. I even studied with her at a nearby fast food restaurant after school. Gradually, new rumors started circulating in second high. People said that I, the legendary simp, had switched targets and was now harassing the beautiful scholar under the guise of studying. This caused dissatisfaction among Sophia's fanboys. And one day after school, they blocked me behind the teaching building. Alex, stay away from Sophia. A bottom feeder from Class F like you has no right to be around her. The boy who spoke had a buzz cut, a strong build, and well-developed muscles. He was apparently a shop put athlete from Class C. The three bows behind him, though not as tall, also looked fierce. They quickly formed a circle, trapping me in the middle. I calmly said, Sophia is my tutor. I pay her, and she provides a service. I'm not taking advantage of her at all. The bus cut boy sneer. Tutor, that's just an excuse for you to get close to Sophia, isn't it? Alex, you're shameless. You used all sorts of tricks to chase Alicia, and now that you can't get her, you're bothering Sophia. As a guide, I'm embarrassed for you. Yet, you're disgusting. She never likes someone like you, who's addicted to chasing girls and doesn't study. Sophia is a good student if her grades drop because of you affecting her future college prospects. Can you take responsibility? I felt a bit speechless. Yes, I admit I used to be a bit of a lovesick fool, but I've mended my ways and I am focusing on my studies now. How could Sophia tutoring me cause them such displeasure? Besides, I'm paying for the service. Enough talking. The bus cut boy lost his patience, took a step forward, and bumped his chest against mine. If we don't teach you a lesson, you won't realize your mistake. With that, the other bows rolled up their sleeves, ready to act. What are you doing? At that moment, Sophia arrived, grabbed my wrist, and pulled me to her side. She was small, with a cute bun, but stood straight with an air of unassailable authority. The bows immediately dropped their fierce looks when they saw her. 
even showing some innocent charm. They change expressions faster than a Sichuan opera face change. Sophia, don't be fooled by Alex. He's just a playboy. He couldn't get Alicia. So now he's after you. We're doing this for your own good. If this loser from class F affects your studies, what will you do? He just wants to date you. Unlike us, who genuinely care about you. Sure. They call me a playboy while trying to butter her up. Sophia cut them off sharply. Alex is my employer. Her loud voice even surprised me. She stood in front of me, announcing boldly, I rely on him for my livelihood. Anyone who cuts off my source of income will face my wrath. A middle schooler acting tough. With that, she pulled me away quickly under their astonished gazes. Once out of the school, she inspected me closely, turning my arm this way and that. Did you get hurt? I shook my head. She sighed in relief. Good. I'll handle those guys. They won't bother you again. You won't stop letting me tutor you because of this, will you? I dare say no one can teach you better than I can. Seeing my silence, she got a bit anxious. I'll take care of your classroom duties. I'll also fetch hot water for you until you graduate. From now on, you're under my protection. She looked up at me, her eyes bright as grapes, and a sweet lychee scent wafting from her. Okay. Alex. I couldn't help but smile. Such a small girl. Where did she get the courage to stand in front of a nearly six-foot tall guy like me to protect me? So I nodded. Actually, Sophia had a great way of explaining things. Changing tutor suddenly would be inconvenient. She relaxed. From now on, I come to your class. Let them talk about me. The next day during the long break, as we had arranged the previous day, Sophia came to my class. Students from class A who were always proud and aloof due to their excellent grades, rarely interacted with those from class F. Her arrival immediately caused a stir in the class. Under the watchful eyes of dozens of students, Sophia calmly walked over to me, naturally took the pen from my hand, glanced at the math problem I couldn't solve, and quickly wrote out the solution on a scrap paper. I gave her a thumbs up in admiration. A top student is indeed a top student. Behind me, Lisa nudged Alicia's arm and whispered. That's Sophia, the one who's been close to Alex lately. Alicia snorted coldly and turned her head to continue touching up her makeup. But after just a few seconds, she sat up straight and kicked the leg of my chair hard, pouting in dissatisfaction. She said, Alex, you're disturbing my rest. I frowned at her. I had been silently looking at the problem and hadn't made a sound. Moreover, the entire class was nosy with chatter and play. There were plenty of noses louder than mine. So I ignored her and continued discussing the problem with Sophia. Suddenly, a ballpoint pen flew from behind and hit my notebook, leaving a long black line. Damn it. I had just solved that problem. Alicia leaned back in her chair, arms crossed, looking defiant. We in class F don't welcome people from class A. Be sensible and leave. A bottom of the classroom doesn't welcome a top student. That's just picking a fight. I took a deep breath and retorted, Alicia, if you're sick, take medicine. Don't act crazy here. Alicia's face darkened completely, her big eyes glaring at me. Lisa and Martin beside her gasped in shock. I glared at her, then turned to pack up my books. Sophia, let's go to the rooftop. Don't mind the lunatic. After saying that, I grabbed Sophia's hand and walked out. The nosy classroom fell silent, and all eyes were on us. Behind me, Lisa whispered, Wow, is he really with Sophia? Alicia looked complicated but said nothing. Due to Alicia's outburst, the long break was almost over. Sophia and I agreed to meet at the milk tea shop after school to study. However, when evening came and I was packing up to leave, Alicia appeared at the classroom door. Given her behavior during the day, I didn't want to waste words and prepared to ignore her. She blocked my way. I heard you want to get into class out. I replied impatiently. Yes. So what? I'll help you find a tutor, she said. Her voice unusually gentle and sweet. The best one. No need. I have Sophia. Alicia's expression turned sour, pouting in anger. What does she know? More than you do. I brushed past her without looking back. Under Sophia's tutoring, my grades improved rapidly. 
Several small tests yielded good results, but I was still some distance from returning to class. A. One day, while working on a physics test, Martin ran back with a bag of snacks. I heard we're getting a transfer student. My pen paused. By my calculations, he should be arriving soon. The class bell rang, and just like in my past life, Alicia helped him into the classroom. He had gotten lost on his way to report to class F and was hit by a basketball, injuring his leg. I looked at Itumakoto's face, which wasn't particularly handsome. He wasn't smart, but he was manipulative and opportunistic. Yet, such a person made Alicia defy her parents' orders and even protest by going on a hunger strike just to make him her boyfriend. I witnessed their entire process of flirting, dating, breaking up, reconciling, and finally breaking up again. I took advantage of her vulnerability back then. Alicia, deeply hurt, drank herself into oblivion, and I stayed by her side. I accompanied her when she drank, smoked, and suffered from insomnia. When she cried, I cry. When she laughed, I laughed. One night, after she got drunk, she undid my belt. The next morning, she was dazed for a long time before saying she wanted to marry me. I laughed until I cry. I thought my deep affection would not be in vain. Who knew that when our child was just seven months old? These two went out on a date behind my back. I was just a side note in their grand love story. Idu Makoto's seat was arranged in front of mine. Alicia helped him sit down carefully. He thanked her. Alicia shook her head and said, It was nothing. My heart ached. And I quickly lowered my head. Tears welling up and almost falling. In my past life, I was arrogant and never considered the ordinary Itumakoto a threat. But in this life, I just wanted to run away. After school, Sophia came to me. Alex, your favorite oolong tea. It was funny. Although Sophia was my tutor, logically, I should be the one treating her well. But she always bought me delicious things. She claimed it was to combine work and rest. Improving study efficiency. I shook my head. Sophia. I want to drink. So we went to the night market behind the school, ordering beer and skewers. Since deciding to focus on my studies, every time I met Sophia, it was to study. It was rare to relax like this. During the meal, neither of us spoke. She ate skewers enthusiastically. I drank beer enthusiastically. After eating and drinking, I was so drunk I could barely stand. She immediately reached out to support me. No need. Don't be polite. I ate well so I'd have the strength to carry you back. Without a word, Sophia lifted one of my arms and placed it over her shoulder. Wrapping her arm around my waist, her soft, fragrant body tried to support a grown man's weight. She was so cute that it pained me and made me want to laugh. Alex, try to be happy. She stayed by my side, not speaking if I didn't. After a while, she finally spoke softly. I just want you to be happy. I let her support me. My eyes red. I couldn't tell anyone about my past life's experiences. No one could understand my pain. Even though I should hate certain people, in this life, they had done nothing wrong yet. And I had no reason to. Sophia supported me the entire way. And I felt miserable the entire way. When we were just a block away from home, I exhaled softly. Sophia, this life, I'll be willful just this once, from now on. No one can make me cry. Alex, Sophia's voice was soft. If you want to be willful, be willful. I'll comfort you. After all, I'm a good student. I don't need to study hard. So I have plenty of time. A warmth filled my heart. And I smiled silently. The midterm exams were approaching. I started studying even harder. Hoping to get into class as soon as possible. During self-study, Idu Makoto threw a paper ball at me asking me to pass it to Alicia behind me. I was focused on reviewing the key points Sophia had marked for me. And this sudden interruption annoyed me. I remembered in my past life. I also reacted this way, harboring the greatest hostility towards any bull who tried to get close to Alicia. I immediately opened the paper ball, finding a piece of chocolate and a doodle of a little ghost face. I instantly got furious and unceremoniously declared my claim over Alicia telling him not to waste his time. But during the break, he angrily grabbed Alicia's hand. The look Alicia gave me could have killed. Thinking about it, 
I just glanced at the paper ball and said, Dude, it's self-study time. Just because you don't want to study doesn't mean others don't. Idu Makoto's face turned red with anger. It's just a note. Do you really have to be like this? If you love studying so much, why are you in class F? Damn it. Looking down on me. I'm in class F because I choose to be. Not because I belong here. After saying that, I stood up, gathered my things, and threw them on Itu Makoto's desk. If you like passing notes so much, fine. Let's switch seats. Pass them all you want. Itu Makoto clenched his fists in anger. Why are you targeting me? I'm not trying to take Alicia from you. I just wanted to thank her. Judging by his defensive tone, he must have heard about my high-profile pursuit of Alicia. Passing this note was probably just to embarrass me. Too bad. I no longer cared. First, you can chase whoever you want and thank whoever you want. It has nothing to do with me. Second, I'm giving you a convenient opportunity. You should thank me. Then I pulled him up and sat in his seat. Honestly, I was tired of being stuck between these two. This was a good excuse to leave. In the end, I sincerely hope these two would stick together and not harm others. At this point, Alicia, who had been touching up her makeup, looked up and frowned at us switching seats. Alex, what do you mean by this? Since she offered to find me a tutor and I refused. We hadn't spoken in a while. I turned and smiled faintly. Just helping you two out. No need to thank me. Alicia's face turned sour. Idu Makoto sees the chance to pick up the paper ball. Sorry for disturbing you. It's my fault. Alicia. I noticed you didn't have breakfast. Want some chocolate? Alicia. Still angry. Impatiently slapped the paper ball from his hand. I hate sweets. Itu Makoto clenched his fists secretly. I didn't bother watching their daily drama and continued studying. Soon, the bell rang. I grabbed my cup to get some water. But Itu Makoto grabbed it first, with an innocent, pleading look. He said, Alex, I'm sorry for what I said during self-study. Let me get you some water as an apology. Please forgive me. No need. Not letting me get the water means you won't forgive me. You hate me? My temples throbbed. Talking to this guy was exhausting. I just want to be friends. He continued, shaking the cup. Don't worry. I'll be quick. Ignoring my protest. He ran out. Martin was puzzled. Is he okay? I shrug, showing I didn't understand. About five minutes later, Itu Makoto came back with hot water. Alex, here you go. As I reached for it, he let go early deliberately tipping the cup towards him. The steaming hot water spilled out, scalding his hand. Itu Makoto screamed in pain. Alex, I just wanted to be friends. Why won't you forgive me? His shout drew the entire class's attention. Can you believe it? A 16-year-old playing such childish, disgusting tricks. I used to think that despite his poor background and academic performance, there must be some unknown charm in him that made Alicia so deeply in love with him. But seeing this now, I was about to lose my temper when Alicia rushed over. What happened? Where did you get burned? Itu Makoto showed his red, scalded hand. I'm fine. Don't blame Alex. He didn't mean it. To my surprise, she ignored Itu Makoto and came straight to me, checking my hand carefully. Compared to Itu Makoto's red, scalded hand, I only had a few red spots. Are you blind? Alicia yelled at Itu Makoto can't even hold a cup of hot water properly. Her words stunned both Fitu Makoto and me. Alicia forcefully dragged me to the infirmary. The doctor's exact words were, if you had come any later, the wounds would have healed. Alicia cleared her throat, looking away. On the way back, we walked in silence, almost at the classroom. She suddenly spoke, Alex, switch seats back. Wide, a long pause, just before we reached the door, she said, I take back what I said about hating you. After a moment's hesitation, she added, The day after tomorrow is my birthday. The whole class will be there. Can you come? I discovered Alicia was pregnant on her birthday. It started when she, who usually had trouble sleeping, suddenly became lethargic and had an increased appetite. I bought a pregnancy test for her to try, but she impatiently said it was impossible and continued clubbing, staying up late, putting on makeup, wearing high heels, and eating irregularly. For her health, I intentionally drained the water from the toilet and tested her morning urine that she forgot to flush. 
Sure enough, two lines appeared. The moment I confirmed she was pregnant, I almost jumped with Joe. I even went to the store and bought a gift box with a pair of baby socks inside. I thought this was the best gift from heaven for Alicia and me. She was willing to carry our child. And I wanted to give her a home. To stay with her forever. To give her my life. But much later, I learned from Ida Makoto that she had come that day to break up with me. The child was an accident. And she didn't want it at all. But she couldn't tell if it was my child or Ida Makoto's. If it was Ida Makoto's, she was happy. If it was mine, she hated it. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out the way she wanted. The child was mine. Memories can be painful. I rubbed my temples. I have something to do. I can't go. The person behind me stopped. Her voice sweet and slightly pleading. It's at the manor we used to go to. I'll wait for you. I have something very important to tell you. I realized Alicia and Itu Okoto were both the same. They couldn't understand human words. I didn't respond and went straight into the classroom. The days quickly passed. And soon it was two days later. All my classmates had prepared birthday gifts for Alicia. Lisa had prepared a crystal ball. And Martin put a bag of crunchy noodles in an empty box. He sneered at me. Alicia used to bully you. Giving her a bag of crunchy noodles is more than she deserves. I smirked. Then turned to see Ida Makoto place a hairpin in a paper bag. No logo. Crudely made. Likely bought from a roadside accessory shop. To bat he didn't know Alicia never wore unbranded items. I continued my classes. Took notes. And did my homework until school ended. Everyone went to the car Alicia's family had sent. I avoided the crowd. Went to an empty corner. Took out a paper airplane from my pocket. And burned it with a lighter. In this life, I decided to cut my losses early, stay away from toxic people, and live my life well. I'm doing great. And my future should be fine too. The only regret is the child who was hated by his own mother and died in a car accident. The fire quickly consumed the paper airplane. I thought, if I have a chance to fall in love and get married in this life, please come back and be my child. I'm strong and clear-headed now. This time, I'll protect you. I went home, curled up in bed with a book, and it started to rain heavily outside. At midnight, Alicia called me. I turned off my phone. In the middle of the night, my mother woke me up, saying Alicia was in the yard. I glanced at the clock on the wall. It was 3 in the morning. The rain hadn't stopped. I went outside. She stood in the drizzle, her hair sticking to her face, her eyes covered with a layer of moisture. Her first words were, why didn't you come? Holding an umbrella, I stood five or six steps away, not wanting to get closer. The umbrella was small, and I didn't want to share it with her. I never said I would come. Alicia closed her eyes, took a deep breath. Fine. It doesn't matter. She opened her eyes, went to the car to get a cake, and brought it to me. I waited for you to blow out the candles. I didn't move, watching the rain drip from her hair her lips turning blue with cold, but I didn't feel any sympathy. Our eyes met, and she saw the coldness in mine. Her smile faded, and she sighed. Alex, can't you just give in, please? Please show some mercy and acknowledge me. Don't look at me like that. My eyes fell on the cake in her hands. In the past, I was always the busiest on her birthday, choosing gifts, baking the cake, writing cards, decorating the venue dot dot. I never expected anything in return. Nor did I hope to blow out the candles with her. I just wanted her to be happy. I don't know why this Alicia suddenly started caring about me in this life. But belated affection is worse less than grass. I no longer cared. Alicia, don't you understand? I don't like you anymore. Not only do I not like you. But I also don't even want to be friends with you. My words left her stunned. Doubly what? I switch seats with Itu Makoto to stay away from you. I aim to get into class to be far from you. I used to like you. And it troubled you. I realize my mistake. And I have changed. Alicia shook her head vigorously. No. It's not like that. Alex. I like you. From the moment you ignored me. I realized my mistake. I wanted you to come to my birthday party to confess to you. I prepared flowers. Fireworks. 
A 3,000 word love letter. Too late. Or maybe I'm just too vengeful. I learned my lesson after one heartbreak. Alicia. Let's end it here. Don't come to me anymore. Our ties end here. Right now. The rain pounded on the umbrella without hesitation. I turned and walked back inside. I was so stingy this time. I didn't even leave her the cheap umbrella. The midterm exam results came out quickly. I made it to the school's top 10 and was honored on the honor roll, successfully returning to class A. On the day I packed up, Martin hugged me, crying. Brother G, I'm really going to miss you. Once you go to class A, we won't see each other as often. I gently punched his shoulder. I'll come back often to see you. You should work hard too. If you get into class A, we can be deskmates again. Martin wailed. You might as well kill me now. Lisa gave me a notebook, hoping I would study hard and make progress every day. Becoming the pride of class F, many other friends who had played with me also said a few words, gave me snacks, and some small trinkets. After saying goodbye to everyone, I prepared to leave with my backpack. Alicia, who had been silent, came over and wanted to see me off. No need. I refused. Alicia's outstretched hand froze awkwardly. At that moment, Sophia walked in from outside, naturally linking her arm with mine, and under Alicia's jealous gaze, escorted me to class A. At the door, she entered first, hung my backpack on the desk beside her, and patted the chair. Her eyes curved in a smile. Alex, welcome back. I smiled, sat down next to Sophia, and extended my hand to her. Nice to meet you again. Sophia, I'm Alex from Class A. Two years passed in a flash. During this time, Alicia occasionally came to Class A to find me. She brought me meals, water, and an umbrella when it rained. She pursued me as fervently and unconditionally as I had pursued her in the past, but I gave no response. The greatest kindness I could offer in this life was not to hate or seek revenge. I put all my energy into improving myself. My goal was to avoid any more entanglements with these people and not repeat the tragedies of my past life. After the college entrance exams, Class F organized one last gathering, where Alicia got drunk. With red eyes, she cautiously approached me, hesitated for a long time, and finally asked, Alex, I just want to know, back then, you liked me so much, why did you suddenly stop liking me? I thought for a moment and softly said, I had a dream. In the dream, you weren't very good to me. I rambled on a lot, and strangely, recounting it now, I felt no emotional stirrings. It was as if the once vivid and painful memories were someone else's story. She listened intently. By the end, her long lash lowered, and her eyes became as calm as a still autumn lake. I thought she would laugh it off as a bad joke, but she looked at me seriously. Alex, the Alicia of the past life didn't love you, but the Alicia of this life does. I took a sip of my drink, feeling slightly tipsy, but the Alex of this life isn't planning to wait. When the college entrance exam results came out, I applied to a university in the capital city, a city I liked and a major I was passionate about. I would no longer lower myself or live without a sense of self for anyone or anything. On the day I went to report to school, Alicia came to see me off. In the bustling airport, her eyes were filled with reluctance. She opened her arms and pouted. Alex, you might not see me for a long time after you leave. Can I have a hug before you go? Her college entrance exam results weren't satisfactory, so she chose to retake the year. This goodbye and D meant we wouldn't see each other for a long time. I took a step back, avoiding her touch. Cutting ties decisively was my approach in this life. Her face was full of disappointment. All right, Alex, wait for me for a year. I'll come find you. I shook my head. I won't wait. Don't waste your time. At that moment, the airport's public announcement system sounded. I turned and left without hesitation, not even saying a polite farewell. Behind me, Alicia's voice called out. I won't listen to you. Alex, I will come find you. I took out my earphones and put them in. On the plane, I found my seat and sat down. Then, a sweet lychee fragrance wafted over. I turned my head to see a sweet, pretty face. Sophia smiled at me. 
Alex, for the next three years, it's your turn to take care of me. All right, 